They call it the Acer Swift X14. In this video, let's unbox it. I'm looking forward to this laptop. The reason being is I feel as if it's finally a competitor in the 14 inch category from a performance standpoint. This video is brought to you by Asus ProArt Laptops. The laptop's built from the ground up for creators. More information to come later in the video. For a long time, the Acer Swift X has come with a myriad of options. It has had the Ryzen U series processor. It's had an H series processor from Intel like the uh, i7. 13700H. It's come with an RTX 4050. It's come with integrated graphics. It's come in different models. It now has OLED. It's had this evolution to becoming a laptop to compete from a performance standpoint and from a display and feature standpoint on the 14 inch gaming laptop front. And so I'm excited to check out the features and the build quality of the laptop in this video. And then as we move forward into the following days, check out the performance and usability. See if they've given it a max graphics performance that's worthy of the RTX 4070 that it has within it. Now, one thing that I see right off the bat, we do have an RTX 4050 in the system with a 100 watt charger block. Now, I don't think this is going to be uh, an issue per se, uh, but usually we want to see anywhere from a you know 140 to a 200 watt charger block, especially with the RTX 4070. If you want to get the full juice out of that GPU, you want to be able to pull enough power from the wall. So just a little side note on that as we uh, you know work our way through this unboxing. Now, I haven't looked at the device since they have sent it out to me. And what I can see so far is it looks as if it is the same device that we've seen in years past with obviously a few tweaks. So opening up the laptop, you can see we have the co-pilot button. So that is going to allow us access to, you know, the AI assistant uh, that they are pushing really hard. I must say they're being really pushy about AI. Would you agree? If you agree with me that they're being really pushy about this AI stuff, comment below. I think we do have a power button fingerprint reader and we are featuring the Intel Core Ultra 7 matched with the RTX 4070 in this device. I think that's going to be a good combination. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll have good power consumption as well as great performance because of that RTX 4070 give us that lift for creator tasks such as, you know, Photoshop, we're going to be doing work video editing, perhaps doing work in 3D modeling software. That's where we're really going to get our strong lift. And we do have that OLED display. I say one thing that I don't love about, uh, I would say a lot of Acer laptops is they do these plastic bezels rather than doing a complete screen with the bezel integrated into the screen or doing just a bezel that doesn't have this like bumpy plastic material. I wish they had a higher quality plastic material. Uh, it just would create a more premium visual experience uh, and just have a more premium product. Okay, let's go ahead and shut the laptop down. Go ahead and check out the bottom cover. As you can see, it is assembled very nicely. Bottom cover into the side panels, no catchy edges. I do like how the clamshell folds in here. So it makes it a really nice slim package. You can see that there. And so overall, I think they've done a great job of the design. We have ventilation here along the bottom back corner as well as the bottom of the device. And then as we open up the laptop, again, taking a look on the inside, we don't have the air being pushed up towards the panel. So keeping that panel nice and cool as to avoid any heating issues. Uh, no vents on either side. However, let's check out the ports. We have a USB type A and a micro SD card reader as well as the Kensington lock. And on the left side, we have an HDMI, USB type A and two USB type C's as well as a headphone jack. If you wanna check the live pricing, which I highly recommend, you can head down in the description below, click those links. If you make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. All right, let's go ahead and open this thing back up see if we have enough juice to get it powered on. And let's talk about the keyboard experience. What I like about the keyboard is they didn't try and scrunch the keys onto the deck too much. They gave us nice spacing. And what I found when brands try and scrunch the keys on is you end up missing keys, you end up mistyping. Uh, very common with the smaller form factor of the Dell XPS series. All the keys are really mashed together. This, you're not going to have any issues pecking at the right key. So I really like that. Full size shift key, full size enter key, nearly a full size shift key on the left side. Nice full size backspace key. So you're not like searching for the keys. There's a lot of keyboards when these smaller form factor laptops, 
that you end up um, in a search and destroy mission for <laughs> where the right key is. And that's very frustrating. This video is brought to you by the Asus ProArt PX13, a two-in-one laptop built from the ground up for artists, designers, photographers, and videographers. This laptop provides a two-in-one pen compatible 3K OLED corning glass display that is durable and color accurate. It weighs three pounds and is just over a half an inch thick. It has all day battery life for productivity tasks, a durable aluminum chassis that exceeds stringent testing, and let's not forget about the Asus dial to streamline your workflow, providing access to your most commonly used tools. Equipped with the AMD Ryzen AI9 CPU, 32 gigs of RAM standard on every model, and an RTX 4050, 4060, or 4070, this device provides the necessary performance for even architecture and 3D modeling work. Check out my full review content of the Asus ProArt PX13 within the playlist linked in the YouTube cards above or the description below. Let's get this thing powered up and see how that OLED display looks. Uh, first, simply for the unboxing. And in a moment, we are going to take off the bottom cover so we can check out the upgrade path of this laptop. See if uh, we still have a bit of an upgrade path. Hey, let there be light. One thing I'm very impressed with on this Acer device is the 2.8K OLED display, 120 hertz refresh rate. It has 100% DCI-P3 color accuracy, and it's all at a really good price point. It's not cheap. It's not super budget friendly, but it's a good price point for the specs now this year with the RTX 4070 and the features that you get. And the display is super sharp, it's bright, and it's going to be color accurate. I'll do the full you know, color accurate test uh, for the full review. Now, one thing I'm noticing right off the bat, however, I have yet to do anything. Uh, and the fans are already kicking on. We are currently on normal mode. As you can see, set to normal mode. Unfortunately, I have to have a battery capacity of at least 40% to switch to any of the other modes. So that's unfortunate. So I cannot test with you right now if I could get this thing to go to silent mode. That is something we'll find out during the full review, but that's really annoying that I'm not doing anything and the fans are running. Don't like it. Okay, as a side note, uh, once I closed down the Acer Sense, the fan started to slow down, but then I started to open a few tabs on like Google and I opened up Microsoft Store and Dropbox, just anything that was here. And it is already like kicking on the fan and then letting the fan go and kicking on the fan and letting the fan go. So like I said, hopefully when we get into the full review, we'll test out silent mode to see if that helps at all. But right now the fan's like, it's like a roller coaster. Okay, now there is a webcam on the top bezel of the screen. Forgot to mention that. So here's a quick sample so you can see what that looks like. This is the webcam on the Acer Swift X from 2024 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this laptop over, pull off the bottom cover, check out the upgrade path for y'all. Now, as I pull off the bottom cover, we have 74 watt hour battery, fingers crossed, that combined with the Intel Core Ultra 7 will have good battery life. But so far, with all this AI and all this efficiency and all this getting better processors, Windows battery lives are still struggling. Just, we don't need AI. We don't need to get fancy. We just need a battery life because, you know, this thing, you realize that AI is useless if this thing's dead. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna continue to rant on that for the next forever long until I get battery life right. Okay, back to this. 74 watt hour battery on the Acer Swift X. We have the full size uh, M.2 slot here with the drive. You have access to your Wi-Fi card and then the RAM is going to be soldered to the motherboard. We have the singular fan with the air being pushed out of the bottom here, which I really do like. I like that a lot. I like that we're sucking air in through the bottom and pushing it back out through the rear bottom vent. I don't like it when laptops are pushing air up towards me. And so it really created a nice flow system. And I'm curious if that will do a good job keeping the device cool. But there is the upgrade path. We do have a basic one. If you wanna upgrade this laptop, you're gonna have to swap out the boot drive. Kind of annoying because that's something a little bit more on the technical side because they need to reinstall windows and yada yada. But they did provide us with an, whoa. Keep in mind, the battery might fall out on you if you don't hold it in place. If you wanna upgrade your storage, I recommend using the micro SD card reader because you can get a 512 or one terabyte and just upgrade your storage as you go. Maybe get one of those little pocket folders, like name them, and it really creates a more efficient way to be upgrading your storage rather than you know swapping out drives or trying to figure out how to swap the boot drive. My recommendation. Remember, links are in the description below if you are interested in making a purchase 
or when I check the live pricing. Otherwise, you can click or tap the screen here for more videos to help you through buying decision. I'll see you in the next one.